All right, to finish up the front of my of our album, I had told you that I was going to take some tool and show you how to pleat it for the front part. Let me show you for this front part. Um, I could not get it to work. I made, I stitched all of this one, the, not the white, the pink under the bottom, and I stitched all of the pink on this entire album, and for some reason, when I go to do it for this album, it keeps jamming up in my sewing machine. So after four tries, I finally gave up and went and bought some. So this is from Hobby Lobby. It's Merchant 41 Chiffon Ruffle Trim in white. So we are going to use this in the front here. Now it's double sided. So I may take, I'm not sure yet. I may put some white, uh, blue. I may put some blue in the center here, but I have all of my little embellishments. So I'm going to get this box out and try and figure out what all I want to use. And I have another one here on the pink one, I use this plastic flowered trim, so I'm not sure if I want to do this one or the blue. I think I like that one better. And then for the top, I had used some butterflies, which of course I can't find them in this big pile here. I'll find those, and then, oh, here they are. You couldn't really tell that they were butterflies because they were covered up with um, flowers. I can get it open. But you could still say that, see that there was some lace underneath it. Now on mine, I had two problems occur which you can tell this side and this side here kind of got off. This side's lower. Um, I'm not going to put any trim where it touches the um, album itself on either side, but up, sorry, I was looking at the camera. Up here, you can see the glue. So I'm gonna, take and start my flowers here and then I'm going to put some here to cover that up and then it's going to run down along this bottom part. So look at yours and decide where you want to put your flowers. If you have anything like me that you need to cover up, it's okay to make mistakes. You just got to know how to work with it. So I'm going to just uh, run fast forward and then just let you watch me design it.
for the bottom of the carousel. I'm using the same one I used on my other album. I just uh, think it looks better with something a little um, curved to it. And I ended up cutting these little guys off. I didn't like how it looked. So we're going to glue around the edge down the other side. I'm just going to get an estimate of how long I need mine. And then cut it. And then I'm also going to go ahead and cut these guys off. I've had this trim for a really long time. So I couldn't even begin to tell you where it came from. But just anything that y'all can find that just has a little flow to it. A little droopiness. Would work. One more. Let me make sure I have it facing the correct direction. And I'm going to start on this end, try and get it down behind these flowers. So I'm going to do about 16 inches on mine. So I'm just going to measure it out and cut a piece. And the center of our album is about right where I put these flowers. I'm going to use uh, Fabri-Tac and uh, hot glue. So my ribbon, I'm going to tuck it up underneath the flowers. So I'm going to put glue here. and get it to come out. I'm not putting it on the ruffle. I'm just putting it on the blue of the cover. Give me a good clean edge here. I'm also going to put some hot glue and keep it in place while the fabric, tech, the fabric glue dries. I'm just going to tuck it under. And I still can see where the hot glue, it looks like it made a little raised indention. So we're going to solve that problem by just adding more flowers. Why not? Let's see what I can do.
edition came with a uh, page of stickers, the one that I'm using. So I'm going to use those inside. I may add a couple of them. May do something across here to kind of break up all those flowers. So let's see what we can get into next. All right, so this is how I ended up finishing the cover of my album. Um, my paper uh, pad had a lot of little stickers on it, so I put them out kind of randomly around here. Um, this side had a lot of flowers on it, so I broke up, broke it up a little bit with this little precious little blessing. And then this one, this dark blue was kind of glaring to me, I guess would be the only explanation. It stood out too much. So I found this little uh, sticker, Nighty Night, in a yellow and put that across there. And then as I looked at everything, we had flowers here, flowers here. And I felt like we needed something on, or I, I needed something on this side. So I added another little uh, butterfly, fabric butterfly, half of it. And then put some flowers there so it wouldn't look all heavy on this side and well, nothing on this side. But it actually still looks a little heavy. So I'll probably end up adding some more there. So just kind of an explanation of my thought process, I guess, if it helps any about the look of it. And before we put our pages in and start with our um, designer card stock, we're going to go ahead and put our ribbon on the other side of our album. There's two choices that you can do. Um, you could put it on the back of the album and you would need something to finish it off. A cutout or what have you maybe from your paper collection. But I'm going to go ahead and put mine on the inside to try and make it a little bit easier. Put it on the inside cover and then our designer, our cardstock will cover that up. So I'm going to lay it down line up the top and the back. I'm going to move this little ruffle and make sure the top and the back are aligned together and evenly. And then I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to turn it like this so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm just going to trace where my top ribbon is. There we are. I don't know if it will show up. It's pretty light. I just traced the outer edges. And then with my ribbon, um, I believe we did 16 inches. So I'm going to cut out another piece. I'm just sorry. I'm using my measuring tape on my desktop here. And I'm just going to use the Fabri-Tac since when I use the hot glue here it made little ripples in it. I don't want that underneath my card stock. So I'm going to turn it, well let's try it here. I'm going to put my glue in between the lines that I made. I'm going to bring it in about an inch from the outer edge. Now I'm going to have a little bit of a ripple in it because of this white 
trim that we have, but our paper will cover that up. So I'm just going to press that in place. And then I'm going to put something heavy on top of it until it dries. And we'll get our pages that we started and that have our fabric around the outside. And once this dries, we'll start putting them onto our spine. Alright, I forgot to mention before, depending on the type of ribbon you have, your um, opposite end that's glued, so it doesn't come unfrayed. Just kind of burn it a little bit. go. Now for the, um, I know I was showing you, I've got two, the pink with the girl album was different than this album, but I surely recommend, um, I'll put her link in the description. It's where I first saw this on Instagram. Um, two different locations. Uh, it's scrap underscore therapy. And I think the person that actually makes this, her, uh, it's I-K-S-A-N-O-V-A dot art. But anyway, I'll put the links below. She has about six different um, albums that she made in this design using different colors and different um, flowers and, and embellishments on the front. So... Definitely check out her um, Instagram page and that way you'll have a lot of uh, references to go by when you try and decide how to um, make your album. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and get your pages, your chipboard pages that we put the um, fabric around. And we're going to get our fabric glue and the side that we did not put the fabric on is what is going to go inside our um, little flaps here and what you're going to do is on your first one we're going to put glue and then we're just going to, let me see if I can get in closer. See the little gap that we made when we put our chipboard in to make our space? So we're just going to slide it in. And kind of give a tug on each side. And make sure that it's in there. Touching the bottom. That there's no space. So on each side, and then you're also looking that your uh, pages fall about the same top and bottom. Alright, now I'm going to take my glue and we're going to put it all down through here. I'm pushing the chipboard in as I'm pulling these little flaps up and pressing it down And then our other side. Okay. 
I'm going to pull up on the fabric, push down on the chipboard. So I'm going to just uh, continue doing the other two pages. This is what I love so much about a um, fabric spine. The way that they just, the pages lay down completely flat. There's no bulge on the spine and everything just lays down nice and smooth. Alright, for our first inside cover page, I have chosen for my paper pack this little page here, and go ahead and cut off this bottom part, the little part that comes with the factory edge on it. Straight. All right. I like to place. <coughs> hold on. Let me close up my glue before I make a mess. We know what size our cover is, but I like to put the paper on it because you never know how it ends up with your fabric. Now we want to put the paper, see if I can, we're gonna go all the way up to where our stitch is. Like this, whoops. Is right, right where the paper um, gusset starts. We wanna go all the way up to that edge. So I'm going to start mine side to side. So I'm going to lay it down and then go across to the other side and make a mark where I want to cut it at. And we have a lot of fabric here so I'm just going to feel around and see where that edge is. And then I'm going to cut that. All right, I'm going to double check. And 
and I'm good with that part. We're covered on this side, so now I'm going to turn it sideways so I can do top to bottom. And it pretty much is going to take the entire page. Alright, well I guess mine was actually, actually exactly 12 inches, so we're going to leave it like that. So, set your album aside. So grab me a piece of white card stock. And worse, first we're going to get the width. I do not like measuring all the time. I just like to put it flush on one side. Make sure it's straight. And then make a little mark. Because yours may be different width than mine is because we actually put the paper on the cover and depending on what type of fabric and the thickness and stuff that you used go with just your measurement but from the top to the bottom here we want to do it at five and a half inches And then we're going to get our scoreboard. And we have it here on the five and a half side. And I want you to score at one inch. Wait, I'm sorry, three quarters. Score at three quarters of an inch. I always like to cut off the tips, make a little corner. And what we're going to end up with is glue down on the top like so. Now on this one I used a um, ribbon closure so I'm just going to make a little mark here because sometimes I forget to put a ribbon there. So I've chosen for my top flap this one because I have just like my other um, album. It's The Dusty Attic and the name of it is Love Corners and then I also have some um, Tim Holtz Distress Paint Stormy Sky so I'm going to use that on the front of my flap it doesn't all fit. I ended up cutting the, um, let me show you. I ended up, I won't go through all the trouble of getting them out right now. I ended up cutting this little doodad here. So I'm going to go ahead and get mine ready. Um, first off, I'm going to, since I don't like to measure, I'm going to cut out my um, paper to cover my flap with an, uh, a border of about a sixteenth of an inch showing the white cardstock behind it. So I'm just going to lay mine out and mark it where I want to cut. And then cut that out.
Here we are. See, I don't know if you can tell. See how I have a little bit of border all the way around. And I'm going to take a glue stick. And I'm just going to put it in the center because I'm going to be stitching all of my flaps. Alright, so I'm going to take this and put it in my sewing machine and on the design paper I'm just going to stitch a square all the way around and then I'll have my chipboard painted and everything ready to go. Alright, so I did stitching on all sides. So now we have to deal with these little strings here. And I'm bringing in close. It's um, just like what we did on the spine. And we're just going to take a little pin and give a tug and uh, give a tug on this side uh, I cannot think straight today give a little tug to show the little loop and pull that front stitch into the back there we are and then there it makes a clean front side. Now what I do is, um, I'm just going to take some glue and stick that down. So this is um, the front side. So we have the front side and when you stitch your uh, white cardstock, it makes, of course, the back side. So what I do is I take the piece that I'm going to lay on top of it and I stitch that one. And so I need to go ahead and get rid of these little uh, threads the same way we just did that one. We give a little tug and find where that loop goes over the top of the other loop of the other thread and pull it through and this one is seems going to be a pain in my tush let's see I got one more somewhere here oh I see it All right, I'm going to cut this down. It's a little bit more than what it needs to be. I'm going to take some glue. Stick on that. There we go. Now, if you're doing a ribbon closure like mine, we're going to go ahead and put our ribbon down. So we'll put our tab at the top underneath the paper, fold that down for now. I am going to be using this thin blue and I think I'm going to cut it, sorry I'm using my ruler on my I'm going to cut mine about 16 inches. Alright, so when we flip this over, we're going to find the center. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm not going to make mine exact. And just because I happen to have my hot glue gun ready, you can use any type of tape or glue that you want to use. I'm just going to put a little dab here. 
push that down. And then go ahead and put our other piece on top of it and it'll cover all of the back stitch. There we go, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue this into place. And make sure that it's centered or even directly with your bottom page. And now we have our ribbon all sandwiched in there. So I'm going to pull the ribbon straight down. I'm going to cut another piece at about the same size. Maybe a little bit longer than needed, but I'd rather have it too long than not long enough. So I'm just going to keep this straight. You can measure it if you want to find exact center. Put a little hot glue. You know, press this. No, I, <laughs> I picked up the roll of ribbon by mistake and it just rolled all the way across my room. I'm going to have some room in the wind back up. There we go. When we close it, we'll have a nice bow. And if you want to shorten yours, go ahead. Now we're going to work on decorating the front of our flap. Let me go pick up this ribbon that's all over the floor. 